Okay, so if anyone's seen the, the boron video out there, um, you guys know that I love boron. Um, I also put uh, boron trihalide on the Christmas tree at Christmas. Um, and this is because boron is, is still an element that's very close to my heart uh, because that's what I did um, my PhD on and I also did a postdoc. So I was researching boron for a long, long time and I'm still very interested in the chemistry of boron. I've never seen boron tribromide, though I lecture about it and about molecules like it of boron with three chlorines or fluorines or bromines. So I thought I'd show you the way I teach about it. I have this model. So it's boron with three bromines on it. Allegedly, boron tribromide is a colourless liquid. It's supposed to be when it's pure. So this is our boron tribromide. Ta-da! As you can see, it's orange. You can see it's a triangle of metal. And the idea is that this is a model of the molecule with boron in the middle. And then I can take a pen and draw on the bromines here, here, and here. You can put the boron in the middle and you can draw the bonds. So it's, it's actually light sensitive, so we're storing it under, um, under foil usually, if it's, if it's out in the light. Um, it's a little bit light sensitive, so what we're getting is a little bit of bor uh, a bromine formed in our boron tribromide. Um, this could also be left over, you buy it and it is orange as well actually. So it's probably a little bit of bromine left over for when it was synthesised in the first place by the chemical company. What I'm hopefully going to show you today, it usually does it anyway, it usually reacts very, uh, quite, quite quickly with air and the moisture in the air, well mostly the moisture, um, is that boron, will, boron tribromide will fume, okay? Um, it usually blocks up our syringes and stuff, so I'm hoping it's going to fume today. So the reason I have this is to show um, my students that when I rotate the molecule round, it looks the same. So the molecule is just like a flat triangle with three bonds and the boron in the middle. And if you look at it edge on, it's completely flat. Well, there's a little knob here. You'll notice that we've got this fancy, fancy get-up going again. So we have what is called a shake line setup. This is because we can't have boron in, in, in oxygen, boron in, in, especially in wet oxygen, because it will react with it. And we want to keep our, our compound as nice and pure as possible so my students can use it for their reactions. So if I put a bit of argon on, hopefully, and find out which line this actually comes from. But the knob here is quite useful because it also indicates the students that the boron doesn't have the maximum amount of number of electrons around it that it could do. So there's a possibility of some molecule that has extra electrons, like ammonia, coming in and attacking and giving some of its electrons to there. And when it does happen, you get a molecule like this one, where here you have the boron, which has had two electrons given to it by the ammonia. This is a syringe. Obviously, boron tribromide is a liquid. It actually melts at, uh, I think, it's about four, minus 46 degrees. Um, so at room temperature, it's a liquid, so we can actually syringe it around. I'm going to put this super seal in the top, um, just so we don't let any air go in. And then I'm going to syringe out a little bit and just put it in this watch glass, and hopefully it will do some fuming. We're now opening up our tap. OK, so actually, if you can see carefully, you can see the fumes coming out the top already. So this donates electrons and the boron accepts electrons. It's a so-called Lewis acid that's a molecule that accepts a pair of electrons. And you can see when it pairs, accepts these electrons, the bromines are forced downwards. So instead of being flat now, it's shaped like a tetrahedron. That's a ball with four um, equally spaced groups around it. I hope that top is going to stay on. So what we'll do is we'll flush this out with argon a few times. So we've got argon gas going through this. Okay, so argon's an inert gas. It doesn't react with anything, or at least not, not at room temperature anyway. So if we flush it out with a bit of argon, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit, because we don't need much of this. Don't want to waste too much of it, because once it's in the air, it's useless. So I'm hoping that some of it will come out. There's a little bit of it. Lewis, after whom the Lewis acids were named, was a very interesting chemist. He died in the late uh, 1940s, about the year I was born. He was found dead in his lab. 
possibly with his mouth smelling of cyanide. He may have been poisoned. Nobody's ever quite sure. But he was a very influential chemist. He worked in Berkeley in California. And he was the person that defined what a chemical bond was in the modern sense, that is, two electrons being shared by two atoms. And so every time I think of boron tribromide and similar molecules, Lewis acids, I think of Lewis and what he gave chemistry. Pull this out of here. It's a big, thick needle, so hopefully that won't get bunged up. That went everywhere then. Let's pull that fume hood down. So you can see I splashed a bit there, and it's all there. And you can actually see it reacting with the super seal. Okay, this is a really, really reactive compound. So it's, it's everywhere. I'll put that in there. OK, so what's actually happening here is that the boron tribromide is reacting with the water in the air. Okay, it's mostly the, the moisture in the air that it's reacting with. Actually, it's pretty reactive. What we're getting off is HBr gas, so it's hydrogen bromide gas. Okay, and um, what you probably see is a white residue of some sort of boric oxide left behind. Um, but HBr gas, this is why um, uh, boron tribromide is, is, is a toxic chemical. Um, it's because HBr gas, what it gives off as well, is also toxic. Um, so it's not, this is why we're using a fume cupboard, because it's not, not a very good thing to breathe in at all. I lecture about boron tribromide and similar ones because of their shape, because of the way they behave and their simple reactions. Chemists like Debbie, who make boron compounds, use this as a useful starting material. They can react the, comp the bromide, one of the bromides comes off, and they put on some other group and make more and more complicated molecules. So it's like a starting building block, which they can make more complicated. But I don't study boron chemistry, so to me, it's just a triangle of aluminium. <laughs>